All right, so I wanted to make a quick little tutorial video on a new piece of functionality that we added in this last version of Geomagic Design X. Um, so many of you may know that we have, um, you know, updated to DX 2023, and we have a new tool over here in the model tab, um, this 3D polyline curve. And uh, what that is designed to do, um, you can do a lot of different things, but um, this part right here actually is a great demonstration tool for that. So you have this handle here that maybe you want to extract and model that handle. And DX in the past can do that just fine. It has a way to do that. Um, and it even has some interesting different ways of doing it, but this tool is designed to do it much faster than before. Um, before I use this tool, that this tool is going to be a manual way of designing this that then you can use for editing inside of CAD. Um, I want to point out that there's another way I will show. We have this thing called Pipe Wizard that we've used forever, where you can actually grab these regions here. And this is another way that we've done it in the past. I just wanted to highlight it before I go on. Um, and I can select those regions and say, hey, I want to create a pipe from those. Click Next. And it just takes a second to calculate. It gives you a preview. You can say, I want to cap the ends. And then hit OK and hide the mesh here. And you'll see that it automatically models that. Now, one thing about this method of doing it is it used a polyline to sweep. I mean, it, it used a spline, a 3D sketch spline. Um, there's some other things that you can do in the software to uh, create it a different way, but that is a really neat way of doing it if you're gonna demo it real fast to show that the tool can do this thing. But what I wanna show today is the manual method because a lot of people need to model it the manual method. And we have a new tool that helps with that. Uh, and makes it a lot faster. So if you're gonna come over here and use the new uh, 3D polyline curve, the first thing we need to do is create points because if you come in here, this tool wants uh, these intersection points in order to create a 3D curve between them. It wants those first. So what we're gonna do here is come over and say, I want to create a vector from that cylinder axis and then I can hit a checkbox okay and then I have a shortcut here, control space bar, space bar will allow you to run the same tool again. Um, so you can run the same tool over and over again using that control space bar, and then you can just quickly create these vectors. Let me make sure I did that wrong right. Um, it helps if you pre-select it, like I'm doing here. If you pre-select it and then hit control space bar, and it'll use the same even construction method there. And then see here, I could create that control space bar, accept it, control space bar, accept it. And that vector too, let me just make sure it's it's all good. No, it's not. Something's jacked up with that. So I'll just mess, I'll just delete that, and then we'll come back over here and do what I did before. Yeah, that looks a lot better now. So this is kind of like the traditional way of calculating the pipes is you find all the center lines and these don't exactly intersect. They don't exactly intersect with each other. So, but with our tool, I can select those vectors and it will actually average and create intersection points. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a start point and I'll just create a plane right here. And what I'm going to do is pre-select, I'll hide my mesh. And I'll pre-select that vector in this plane. And then I'll say, I want to create a point with that. And then hit OK. So I just created a point on that plane intersecting that vector. And now from here on out, I'm going to go ahead and say with that vector and that vector, I want to create a point. And you'll see it automatically changes the method based on my pre-selection. So that's why I like to pre-select. It just makes it a little faster because it usually assumes what I'm wanting to do there. And I'm coming around and I'm creating intersection points between these vectors. And there we go. 
So now I created intersection points, all the vectors. Now all we got to do is create that 3D polyline curve. So I can come over to 3D, 3D polyline and select the point. Then I can come over here. Now I want to add a radius. So I will add that at the end. So I'm just going to come over and click on each of these individual points. Like so. And before I get out of here, I'm going to scroll back up and I'm going to add uh, fillets to these. So what I'm going to do is you click on the point and then you can add in. And these are, I'm just going to do a, a half an inch for these. 0.5, 0 0.5, there. So I added the half an inch 3D fillet to that and hit OK. So now it creates this polyline, line arc 3D curve for me. Now I can turn on the sketch here. I mean the uh, mesh, and I'll just grab this plane that I created and I'll do a mesh sketch on it. And I'm just gonna grab that um, diameter here. And I'm not really dimensioning this, I'm just kinda going on the fly here. Now because that handle is at a slight angle, you'll see that it's at a slight angle, but what I'm gonna use it to do is just grab the diameter of that circle and then I'm just gonna move that circle to intersect. Now, because that slice is happening out here, so there's a slight, because that isn't parallel. Obviously, I could make this parallel and do whatever I wanted with it. Um, but since this is going to be a sweep, it'll be all right. So now you'll see here that I have my qualifications for a sweep. I have a profile and then the curve there. And you'll see that polyline curves over here in the tree. So I can say I want to do a sweep with this profile along this path right here, this whole polyline path. I just click it from the tree and accept that. And now you see I have a solid that I've created from it. Um, so that's the new 3D polyline curve. You can take point inputs like that and then create a 3D sketch from it and then use it to then create a, a handle like this right here. And it looks like my uh, radius is a little bit different but I could obviously go in there and change it. Um, so that is a uh, history-based tool, you know, so I can come in here and if I wanted to change those diameters, I can. All right, so that is my tutorial on using the new 3D polyline curve inside of DesignX.